Faithful Word Catholic Church or Faithful Word Baptist Church? Actually, both. I'm going to show you the proof, irrefutable proof, of this thing here, this connection between these two men, Stephen Anderson and Oscar Bogart here. This guy is a charismatic Roman Catholic. I'm going to show you the proof. Uh, we already did a two-part video, my wife and I, on this issue here. And while she was doing the research, uh, my wife would find this this uh, universal one church thing. Could not get into it. It kept saying there was an error whenever she would try to click on this website. She tried multiple times. Finally, we just we didn't include it in the study because we just couldn't get the link to work to this website. But thankfully, I have very uh, knowledgeable viewers. And... Um, Right here, Christian Gomez, thank you for this article, brother. I think you will find this very interesting and telling. Webarchive.org. Here's the thing. You can see the link. You can go there on the comments on this very video, the one I just showed the screenshot for. And let me just let me just click on this thing here really quickly because I just want you to see about maybe you know, a little bit of, of whatever what we were saying and doing there. And um we're showing a lot of the different uniforms and stuff of, of Papists. And there's a picture of Bogart with his bit Catholic bishop shirt and little Roman collar thing there. Um, and you can watch the whole study. I mean, we're not going to get into the whole thing here. But, you know, this guy is buddy-buddy with Steven Anderson. I mean, here they are. Set of one of the movies. There's Anderson. There's this Bishop Bogart. Watch that if you want to see more on that. But here we have Brother Christian Gomez here with this link. You go to the link, and this is what it comes up with. Okay, home, who we are, become a minister, outreach, social. And uh, this is the roots of the Universal One Church. This is Universal One Church. Dot org. You can see it right up here. Universal One Church. Dot org. Okay, um, very interesting. Our founder in history, they quote Matthew 16, verse 18, just like the Catholic Church does. And look at this. The roots of the universal one church run deep and are steeped in tradition within the Christian church. The word universal itself, by definition, is synonymous with Christian or Catholic, originating from the Greek language word Catholicos. You know, and it goes into blah, 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 blah. Catholic. Okay. Look at this. Staff and leadership leadership right and staff of the universal one church father jordan francis osm we'll talk about what osm is in a minute here bishop father these are catholic priests okay and then there's reverends underneath that and they're all osm look at this sunday mass 7 p.m eastern time there confession and vatican radio news Yes, they are definitely that this uh, Universal One Church is a Roman Catholic offshoot. But what does this OSM thing mean? Well, just do a little Google search. Catholic Order OSM. Servite Order. The Servite Order is one of the five original Catholic mendicant orders. Its objectives are the sanctification of its members, preaching the gospel, and the propagation of devotion to the Mother of God with special reverence to her sorrows. The members of the order use OSM, Ordo Servum, Beta, and then Mary, whatever thing there. But or, Order of Friars, Friar Servants of Mary. There you have the OSM. That's what it is. Servite.org. You can go to any of these things there. You know, um, you know, uh, what is OSM? One secret mission. Being sarcastic there is a Catholic urban evangelistic group there. Hmm. Secret mission. On a secret mission. Here you have, in South Africa, Faithful Word Baptist Church, connected to Bogart, Anderson's little buddy. There, okay. Or actually, Anderson's controller, perhaps we should say. And here you have it. Western Cape 7100 South Africa, Cape Town there. And look at the phone number, 602-456-1049. All right, check this out. Universal One Church, Cape Town, Western 
Cape, 7100 South Africa. 850-720-1061, different phone number, but it's the same address. Faithful Word Baptist Church, Universal One Church. So I wasn't joking when I said Faithful Word Catholic Church. Right there it is, the same address with two different names. Faithful Word Baptist Church, named after Stephen Anderson's cult, and then Universal One Church. Once you go back to what it is, the staff and leadership of that organization is a Catholic bishop. Hmm, how about that? But there's a, another significant few events coming up here, which I think is rather interesting. Here you have the Remnant video, this channel on YouTube, Catholics Rising. What I've been saying about Stephen Anderson and his cult, they're covert Catholics. They're going to start coming out of the confessional. They don't come out of the closet. Well, maybe they will eventually, but they come out of the confessional. They're covert Catholics. They're pushing Catholic teachings and doctrines and things like this. And this is a whole pre-Vatican II channel here on YouTube. And they, you watch this video, they're making fun of a lot of the things that are going on in the modern Catholic churches. So don't give me this thing, of, well, Stephen Anderson speaks against Catholicism. Yeah, radical Catholics do too. It doesn't mean anything. You get some guy stands up and says, yeah, Catholicism is wicked. That doesn't mean he's anti-Catholic. doesn't mean he's not a Catholic himself. There's always fighting within that system. Right here you're seeing it. This is, this is a uh, conservative Catholic organization. But check this out. Catholic Identity Conference 2017, October 27th, 28th, and 29th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All right. Today is the 16th of October. So we're talking, you know, 11 days away, essentially, for the thing to start. And it's going to be a meeting of, check this out, um, post-Vatican II church. They're, they're saying about that. Um, and they say, join us and let's take our church back. It's what the Bible prophesies, brethren. Um, you know, they're St. Pius the Tenth. Indeed, the true friends of the people are neither revolutionaries nor innovators. They are traditionalists. So traditional Catholics are saying, let's have this big conference thing. And uh, let's see if this is the thing where they say it. Two bishops and priests from every major traditionalist fraternity. Fraternity? Where have I heard that word before? I don't remember. I don't, it'll come back. You know, colleges and universities. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> Freemasonry. <coughs> Excuse me. I have to get my throat checked out. But uh, another very telling thing here. CatholicHerald.co.uk here we have an article from July 2015, the 23rd of July 2015. The Pope's Great Evangelical Gamble. It's talking about a possibility of signing this thing. The Holy Father, look at this here, the Holy Father is thinking of signing the text in 2017, the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, alongside evangelical leaders representing roughly one in four Christians in the world today. He's thinking about uniting Catholicism and the evangelical church. Hmm. I find that very interesting that they're making this thing that we want to bring the church, the Catholic church, and the evangelicals together. Let me show you something real quick here and we'll get right back to this article. Look what uh, Andrew Snake posted just yesterday, October 15th. Like I said, today is the 16th. Our church versus, versus the new evangelical movement. Our church versus the evangelicals. Just a coincidence. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. But uh, it goes down through here. It's talking about actually that Tony Palmer, the guy that uh, I made a video exposing his whole thing, and he supposedly died in a motorcycle crash, and there were people who were calling the hospital, and they're like, oh, no, he didn't die. You know, he walked out. You know, crazy. But it goes down through here. It's a very, very interesting article. You can read the thing if you want to. Um, now let's see where I want to read here. Okay, look at this. 
Evangelicals could include the most rabid anti-Catholic fire-breathing fundamentalists right through to the prosperity gospel televangelists. Evangelical, Anglo-Catholics, Charismatics, and modern Protestants, he says. So Anderson coming out and saying, oh, well, our church, as it were, against the new evangelical movement. Well, guess what? This thing gets signed between the Pope and evangelicals. They're going to include fundamentalists like Anderson back under the authority of Rome. Yeah. But anyways, you can go down through here and read this. We're not going to go through it all. But just a interesting thing here. Um, says here, meanwhile, they're saying, you know, we're not, there's no evidence that he's going to do this. We're not really sure and everything else. Yeah, sure, right. But it says here, meanwhile, the Pope is encouraging Catholics to be more evangelical with a small e. He seems to want the faithful to become more like born-again Christians to ditch, ditch the funeral faces, radiate joy, and take the gospel out of the church and onto the streets. A lot of these street preachers, um, I had a brother tell me about this, a lot of these uh, Team Jesus preachers and stuff, they're preaching Catholicism. That's what they're doing. There's a works-based, it's this obedience and all this other very heavy on, you have to do all these things and just constantly crucify your flesh and everything else. Levi uh, Price, I think, is one of them. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of these Team Jesus people. They're Catholic. That's all that they are. But it says here, thanks to Francis and the Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Wait a second. What's this guy again here? He's a charismatic. Again, proved it in the study. He's a charismatic Catholic. What did we just read here? Thanks to Francis and the Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Bogart's part of it. And Anderson's yoked up with Bogart. The faithful are likely to considerably more to look considerably more like evangelicals by the end of the century than they did at the beginning. But whether evangelicals will be more Catholic remains to be seen. Wait a second. Catholics are going to start purposefully making themselves look like uh, Christians? Think, brethren. And how about this? Here you get this event right here, October 27th, 28th, 29th, the possibility of Francis signing this thing on the 31st of October, you know, less than two weeks away. And here you have, right after it, the first five days of November, you have the Post-Trib Bible Prophecy Conference. Put on by uh, Stephen Anderson's professional Hollywood film producer, Paul Wittenberger. Just a coincidence, I'm sure. One of the most key, important things for the Roman Catholic Church to do is to get people away from believing that the rapture is going to take place before the time of Jacob's trouble. Call it the pre trib rapture. They must get people away from that. I've talked about that in other videos. It's a teaching straight out of the catechism that the church has to be purified by this final time. It's exactly what the post-tribbers post believe. They believe that your salvation is not enough right now. Funny, because it's exactly what Catholics believe. You have to go and you have to endure the end to be saved. You have to go into this time and you can't take the mark and you can't this and you can't that and all this other stuff. And some people aren't going to make it. Die in a state of grace. Keep the sacraments. Faithfully attend your local church. You see it all tying together, brethren? Anderson is a Catholic. He is a covert Catholic. We've been proving it now for a long time. And now... The proof is right in front of your face. Universal One Church. Anderson's working with them. And they name themselves Faithful Word Baptist Church. Same exact address between the two. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you if you haven't woken up yet. Stephen Anderson is a liar. He is a deceiver. And again, I've been, I've been exposing this guy for years because I know what happens if I don't. If I don't speak out against Stephen Anderson, who else is? 
Sam Gipps little thing that he put on was ridiculous. It didn't do anything to hurt Steven Anderson's movement. But you see, if we remain silent about this guy, and if we go, well, I think he might be saved or whatever, which Sam Gipps said, <laughs> he comes out and exposes Steven Anderson as being a wicked false prophet, but he says, I do believe he's a Christian. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? You know? But you see, if we remain silent about Steven Anderson and his cult, they're going to make Bible-believing Christians look like idiots. We must stand against this system right here. It's just right in front of your face. I mean, it is Roman Catholicism coming in under the veil of independent fundamental Baptist, Christian, evangelical, whatever. You better wake up.